Hey everybody, Creative Katie, Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel. Today, an art journal tutorial. This one's part of the Break the Blank page, What Comes Next series. So here is the inspiration, the sand dollars, the sea, and then the colors of this broken page. Now on this one, we broke the page using the plastic wrap technique. Now, at the end of this video, I'm going to recap all the techniques and steps with those cards so you can stand by and wait for those. So, I stenciled out the sand dollar stencil just so I can play with the composition. Now, I love the texture from the plastic wrap technique, and it's made me feel and think of the ocean. But I wanted to add some pattern. So I dug out my stencils. This is the ethereal stencil. And I like this text. So I'm stenciling this across the page. I don't really plan on reading it. I just want some fine marks on this background. I don't want to cover up the beautiful texture and lines from the plastic wrap technique, but I do want to add more interest. I'm using black acrylic paint on a makeup sponge, and I'm not pressing really dark. I don't want this to be really forward. I want it, again, to be part of the background. Loving that look. On it. And again, I'm not planning on being able to read it. I wish I had more stencils with that. So here I'm playing with the composition. And with most things, when you're composing, you want multiples, odd multiples, three, five. Now I noticed that the motif in the middle of that sand dollar, which is a TCW stencil, and we'll I'll have that listed in the description box, and you'll see it. I like this little floral motif that's on this ethereal pattern. It matches, it coordinates. So I'm coming in with that. Now I'm using <clears throat> Payne's Gray, and Payne's Gray is not black, a dark bluish gray. Again, I picked that because this is like under the sea. The pattern's getting a little bit too dark, a little bit too forward. I'll be dealing with that in a moment. But I know I'm going to, the sand dollars, I know I'm planning on keeping them white. So I'm a little leery about putting white on in the background any more than there is. So here is the stencil, and I believe it's called Sea Creatures. And I'm going to use the 12 inch, which is what I, you see here. And then I have the six inch as well. I want both sizes. And I'm coming in and I'm just stenciling with white acrylic paint. Now, later on, I'm going to stencil with modeling paste. And some of them are going to be texture, but I didn't want all of them to be texture. So I do put one coat and you can still see the patterns underneath. which I really didn't want. So I'm gonna get rid of that in a moment. So I put the stencil back on once it's dry and I'm coming in with more white paint and that's totally blocking off any of that pattern <clears throat> that was there, sorry. And then I'm coming in with an ever so bit light bit of gold on top to make it that creamy color with a little bit of shimmer. And I'm giving that a dry. Now, because I'm layering the sand dollars, I have to dry in between. I went through my Ocean Commotion sentiment pack and I picked out the one, not all treasure is silver and gold. And I'm just playing with where I want it. Sometimes I change my mind about where I want it. Sometimes I change the quote. 
but I need to, at this point, when I'm setting up the final composition, have an idea of all the components and how they're going to fit. So here I'm layering this sand dollar on top of the larger one. And then I'm going to put a third one here. All in all, I'm going to end up doing five sand dollars that are somewhat layered up, you know, sitting on top of each other. The last two here I am going to use with modeling paste through the same stencil. And I'm going to use my favorite white pearl modeling paste. Now, some of that stenciling was a little too forward, a little too dark. So I have a very little white paint on my makeup sponge and I'm very lightly putting it over top of that just to bump that black back a little bit. Now over here, I it was all blue and I wanted a little bit more of that lime green. So I put gesso on it and I come back with that yellow green and mix it with the Prussian blue like I did when I broke this page and put the saran wrap on top. And what this is gonna do is give me that same texture that I had from the saran wrap technique when I broke the page, but it's going to introduce that little bit of green over there. So I get the white pearl modeling paste and you can use regular modeling paste if that's all you have and then you can paint over it with a pearlized paint if you have or a metallic. And I'm putting it on rather thickly. I want this to be show at the end to be look like it's layered and build up that layer. So there we have the um, saran wrap technique. And I just kind of stamped in a little bit to make it a little less perfect. So avoiding that one, because it's not completely dry. When you go extra thick, it takes extra long to dry. And I'm just putting a little bit of gold on all these other sand dollars. Adding more white to them to make them as opaque and block off all the stuff that's in the background. And now I'm getting ready to do some more modeling paste, the white pearl modeling paste, and I'm applying it with the palette knife. And I just take the precaution of taping down the stencil just to help me make sure that everything doesn't move. Applying it thickly. And pulling it off. Now I have the chicken wire reverse stencil. This one's six inch. I've had the 12 inch and I've loved it. Just got the six inch one. It's a smaller scale, which is why I wanted it. And I'm putting white acrylic paint through it. And it's just giving me that bubble effect. And I'm going to be adding white and then Prussian blue. And I go back and I do a little bit of dance, add one, then the other. I'm not looking for a perfect stenciling, but this is adding to the overall ocean feel that I want to develop. And it is also pushing back patterning that from that I did from earlier stenciling. Remember I said I didn't want to be able to read that text. I wanted it to be an element, a bit, bit of interest in the background. Remember, whatever you stencil on top is going to push back whatever's behind it. But I'm loving the, the look of this. this. This background is very interesting. Now I'm taking some gold with my angle brush and I'm doing a bit of shading. 
And I wasn't sure if the gold was going to be enough or if I was going to go with brown. I didn't want to put black. So the brown, I really liked it. Warmed up the page. It just made everything work together. And sometimes you don't know. So you try one thing and then you try another. So now I have probably a mixture of the gold and the brown on the brush. I just want these focal images that I've created with my stencils to stand out. I want it to look 3D, stand off from the background. And I keep and I build up when you're shading using the floating acrylic technique or any technique. You starting lightly and you build it up in areas to get the effect you like. Now I'm edging the, the page. I start with blue, but that's not dark enough. So I switch to black and I'm using the floating acrylic technique again. And I like this at this stage, especially because I want it to be permanent. I don't want to have to worry that I'm going to have to, I'm going to reactivate it and cause a mess later on. And I know my, my sentiment is going to have black in it. And then I decide to use a little bit of black on the outside part of the sand dollars. And you can tell instantly I do this, the sand dollars look like they are 3D. They look like suddenly popped off that page. They became concave a little bit. And that's the power of shading. And here I, I did add black, but I started, you know, with the lighter colors doing a little bit more edging to build it up. Now I'm dealing with the sentiment. Now I could have left it as it was in that rectangle. And I, if I had done that, I would have colorized it, whether I would have done the green and the blue or whether I would have done kind of an ivory, not sure, but I, would have, I wouldn't have left it white. But here I'm bubble cutting around the script font, and I'm getting out a, a lot of it around the other font, the two PP parts that you see right there. And now that allows me to play with the orientation. I don't have to keep it how it came in the sentiment pack. I can take those words and make it fit the page. So I play with some different possibilities. I didn't on this occasion, but sometimes I stop and take a picture and I compare which one do I like better? Which one do I like more? I didn't like this at all. It was just too linear. And I chose to put it on this side because we have the full length of it and I wanted the eye to pull down. Sometimes I put the sentiment where I want to cover something up if something was less than perfect. Here I'm using TCW gel medium and I'm putting it under and then over to seal it. And this is matte finish because if I was using gloss here, where I put it would shine afterwards and everywhere else where I didn't put the gel medium wouldn't be shiny. And that is not a look I like, which is why I choose to use matte. So now I have the General's Charcoal Pencil. This is the medium one. It is harder. It doesn't flake as much. So this is more, I use this for more just lines. I'm just adding a few dark lines in here. Again, I want to bring out the focal image. And just that little bit of black works so well. But I'm not smudging the medium, and typically I don't. It doesn't smudge as much as the soft or the extra soft. So I grab the extra soft because now I want to smudge it. And I'm going around the sentiment. 
Now I know at this stage, I'm not, I'm done. After this, I'm done. I'm not adding any more wet medium. So it's pretty safe to use something that isn't, that isn't, that might water reactivate. I'm just adding a little bit more smudging, a little more shading. <clears throat> it gives a slightly different effect. And just playing till it looks like what I want it to look like. And I get my gold paint that I had there. I add it water to thin it down and I'm splattering with my fan brush. So it just ties it all together. So Here's the finished page. So we started with the plastic wrap technique. We broke the blank page using the plastic wrap, plastic wrap technique after we applied color using the block and blend. We blended the yellow green and the Prussian blue. Then we did a lot of stenciling to create pattern. Lots of different stencils, with smaller size stenciling. We wanted some back interest. We wanted to build up the interest and we did that in several stages. Then we did the focal image. We stenciled through the stencil and we also put modeling paste through the stencil to build up that 3D effect. We added the sentiment to the page, cutting it and playing with the arrangement. We did all the shading really made that focal image pop and we edged the page and the sentiment. Then at the end, we just added a little bit of gold splatter. Thank you so much for joining me. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. Until next time, go get creative.